This training video is brought to you by K Alliance. K Alliance is the 21st century's educational corporation specializing in the most comprehensive enterprise training solutions, ranging from e learning to instructor led training. Press play for success. After watching this video, be sure to become a Facebook fan to receive the latest updates, promotions, and course releases. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to preview the latest desktop, soft skills, and IT training videos. Now we're dealing with the physical structure in Active Directory. And the physical structure is really for the purpose of controlling replication and controlling login traffic. And sites and subnets are the means within Active Directory to reference that physical layout, to reference the network topology, and it's for these purposes. Now remember, in Active Directory, the replication model that we're using is a multi-master replication model. That means that all DCs have a writable copy of the database, and any domain controller can be used to modify that database. However, if we make a change, such as the addition of a user account, the deletion of a group, or change in group membership, resetting a password, any addition, modification, deletion, while it can be done on any machine, any domain controller, it then has to be replicated to the other domain controllers. You know, in, in a small organization where all the domain controllers are in a single physical location or we just have one or two, then that's not really a big deal. But in medium and large size organizations, it's likely that, the, uh, that you have multiple physical locations and each location may contain one or more domain controllers. So in these situations, it's usually not desirable to allow constant replication between the locations. And there's a couple of different reasons for that. It's possible that these are unreliable or slower links. Uh, and the domain controllers, you, you don't want them constantly communicating in the same site over them. It's also possible that it's just a slower link and I don't want to completely monopolize the bandwidth uh, on that link with Active Directory replication. Uh, or we might need to follow a specific path for replication due to security restrictions. And by security restrictions, we're talking about firewalls, uh, the way that firewalls are configured and who we're going to allow who are going to allow traffic uh, between. It's also beneficial to allow users to log on to a domain controller in their physical location when that's at all possible. And we need to consider site-aware applications like DFS and, and uh, Microsoft's Exchange messaging system. So basically, if you've got a New York uh, and a Chicago location, you don't want users in Chicago logging on and authenticating against a New York domain controller or vice versa. Well, without sites, then there is no way to control that. Uh, the process of getting a service record from DNS would be completely random. It would just say, give me a service record. Uh, I need a domain controller for this domain. And I would get the list, some New York, some Chicago. I would randomly choose one as a client and then communicate uh, to that server. With sites, uh, when I try to communicate with that server and I'm coming from a different site, that server notifies me of my site information instead of facilitating my authentication request. And so, subsequent request to DNS are going to say, give me a domain controller for this domain in this site, and thus we can control uh, the logon traffic. And the same will work for site-aware applications in general. Uh, they will do the same thing. They'll query DNS based on their site information. Now, keep in mind that when we install Active Directory, by default, there is a single site in the forest. It'll contain all domain controllers, and that's just unless you create additional sites and site links. So when you install DCs, they automatically go into this default first uh, site. Okay, in order to effectively plan out sites, there are a number of things that should be considered. We don't just go in and randomly create them. So keep these things in mind. Sites may not map to a single physical uh, location, okay? And that sounds a little bit strange, and in a lot of cases, they will map directly to physical locations. We're just saying they may not. Sometimes we do have multiple physical locations in the same site. We may have a campus. Uh, a school that has multiple buildings and they are all located in the same site. Okay, so we're not necessarily talking about physical uh, building. One physical location, you know, like a campus, might be divided into multiple sites as well. And that's for service localization. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, again, 
there really just isn't any hard fast rule. So we can have a campus that's all in one site or if we want service localization, meaning I want you to hit a domain controller or, uh, or other server based on the site that's as local to you as possible, then I could divide those larger networks into additional sites. We need to consider a connection speed. Uh, the connection speed of 512K or greater within the site, you know. And so basically within a site, we are kind of assuming a LAN connection, uh, not a WAN connection. If you have a WAN connection, then more than likely, more than likely, not guaranteed, it's going to be a separate sites. So that would be an inter-site uh, connection. Now, if no DCs or Active Directory Aware applications exist, then there's little point in creating a site for that location. So if I've got a branch office uh, and I'm thinking of creating a site, but there's no domain controller in that site, well, we would have to say, what's the point? Now, having said that, I mean, there may be times when I do that because I can link it to an adjacent site and I can control which uh, site those users would go to for login. Uh, the, which one would be uh, preferential. And so there are some reasons, but in general, that's, that there's not really much of a point in doing that. And the number of users, uh, if the number of users warrants a DC locally, then we should consider creating a site. So again, sites for the purpose of controlling replication and log on traffic. Replication traffic is going to require some additional administration login traffic is just because you created a site and link subnet objects to the site and I tried to give you a little bit of information as to how I might determine and assess the need for sites although this certainly is not a, a, a design course and so we're not going completely down that road uh, but those are some of the decision making factors when deciding whether I need sites so this has given us an overview of how sites and the physical structure in Active Directory control replication and log on traffic. Now let's move into actually creating and configuring sites and subnets.